going on, everyone? Today we're here with John Christian. Now, this brother runs a YouTube channel called Native Born with him and his wife. And I've seen the videos. Of, they made a lot of videos about uh, Americans moving to Ghana and some of their experiences uh, with a family. So, John, thank you for joining us on the show today. Oh, appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So, John, tell us a little bit about, you know, yourself. What is it that you and your wife said, you know what, I got to get out there to Ghana? <laughs> well, you know, well, for a while, it, it all started in 2013. You know, it was in the States. My wife and I, we always had conversations about visiting the motherland, you know, connecting back with our roots. Um, growing up, my best friend growing up, his father is Ghanaian. And what happened was, I think, in 2012, he himself came to Ghana for the first time ever, and he met his family up in the uh, Shanti region near Kumasi. And when he came back from his trip, he called me up. And he was like, "John, I'm telling you, man, you and Sophia need to go check out Ghana, man. It's beautiful. It's beautiful." And it was interesting because me and my wife was already talking about going to Africa, but we was thinking about South Africa. But since he called me up and he was telling me about Ghana. And we started researching Ghana, and we saw the big expat community here. I think Ghana has the biggest expat community. We was interested, you know. We was interested in checking it out. So that's what really motivated us to go to come to Ghana, and that's how it all started. You know, yeah, it was drama in the states as well, you know. And but uh, we just really wanted to take a, a break from the hustle and bustle. Um, you know, we want to give our kids an experience. And my mother, you know, her being a widow, you know, she, she's very spontaneous at heart. And when she heard that we was going to Africa, she was like, you guys need help with the kids? I'll come with you. And that's how it all started. We just came as a family, as a group. Okay, so it started off as a just a trip just to see how it is. Now, what made you say, you know what, I can actually stay here a little bit? Um. Yeah, I think after the six months, we, we felt that way. I mean... Personally, I think six months wasn't enough. That's why we did come back the second time. You know, we just knew during that six month period, we, we seen what we was able to do. We seen the help that we was able to have. We seen, you know, how the lifestyle was. And we really believed that we could live, live out here. And you can, you know. So the second time we came back in 2016, we had knowledge of how to maneuver. And we made that move and, um, Everything was pretty good until until some unforeseen situations. <laughs> so, what was the, what was the difference between the states and then Ghana in relation to you know you yourself coming as an African American? Um, well, this is more slow pace. It's more chill, more cultural, more family oriented. You know, more our people who look like us. Um, and when you come here. You're reverenced more. You know, people look at you like, oh, wow, you're a movie star or something like that. So you get a more attention. Um, it's the, the, um, the cost of living is cheaper here. So if your money's right, you know, it can go a long way here. And that was part of that was one of our goals is to have a cheaper cost of living because we had dreams, we had goals that we wanted to achieve. And we knew that if we downsize, if, if our lifestyle was a little bit more affordable, we can make some things happen because we're from Connecticut. It's pretty expensive. And even though we want to do something, you know, just financially, it was always tight. So coming here, it gave us some breathing room to do what we wanted to do. Right. So when you came, when you came back in 2016 and, and you guys had, now did you guys like get jobs or did you live off of the money you was making in the States? Because, you know, a lot of people that, that say they want to move to, the, you know, let's say to an African nation, um, you know, right. I've talked to friends since Lights Humble Hunt and like they had jobs, you know, over there in Liberia. So how, how was it with you guys on that front? Yeah, us, we, we was opposite. Yeah, we know Lights Humble. Um, we, we know them. We, we, they contacted us. And they gave us some great advice, too. They helped us out with some things. But um, ours was different. We didn't come here with jobs or anything like that. You can get them if you have like a degree, you have a certain type of profession. There, there's some um, opportunities out there. It might be a little rare, but, but they're out there. My wife and I, we did straight entrepreneurs. You know, we had some savings that we was sitting on. We had a plan to spread it out and we had a plan to do an online business and just push that bad boy full fledged to generate our income. Um, on top of that, my wife, she does some consulting work. 
We also have digital downloads that's available. So we'll do it. We'll focus more on the online and spread out our savings to give us time to grow that. Okay, so what happened with like Fence when you moved there, the living situation? Did you um, buy or, or were you leasing? Or how did that go? Yeah, we leased. And when you come here to Ghana, they, they want you to do like uh, maybe a, at least a six month to a year lease. So when you come here, you got to put that money up front. So, for example, if you get a place for $400 a month, um, they want you to put that down, you know, six you know, time six, put that six months up front. So that's how you do it. It's just that simple. You just come to them and say, hey, I like this place. How much is it? You go ahead and negotiate, and you put down at least six months up front, and that's covered. And then the following six months will be due at the end of that first six months. Okay, and so uh, a place that costs, you say, $400 U.S.? Well, this, this prices, the prices are different, you know. You get you get something for one hundred fifty dollars a month all the way to two thousand dollars a month. So it all depends on your lifestyle. You know, for, for an example, um, the way I see it is that you get what you pay for. Like mm -hmm. for me, security is way more important than uh, affordability. Right. So uh, right now, three stay we're, we're spending like four hundred and seventy five, and it comes with twenty four hour security. It has a convenience store and a pool. You know, some people may say, hey, you, you could have got something cheaper. You know. But I have, I have five kids. I have a big family. Security is number one for me, and I want to have that comfort. Uh, but other than that, you can get things cheaper and even more expensive. So let me ask you a question. You say it can go all the way up to $2,000. Where are you staying if you're paying $2,000 a month? <laughs> I know, right? Well, there's a town called East Legon, which is the richest town in the Accra region, and it's high profile. They, they that's like all U.S. prices over there. All the big boys go there. You know, that's where you see all the Mercedes, all the, all the um, uh, luxurious things. And you can get places to that price. So it's expensive in the in the city. You know, you know how it is. These these places make sure they have their high profile areas. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's for sure. Cause like I say, and, and now you say in two thousand. So you may make you say thinking one to two thousand dollars a month U.S. or their money. Um, say that again. What's okay, that? you say once. No, as far as rent is concerned. Yeah, you say so. If you go stay in that town you're telling me about, you saying it's one to two thousand mm -hmm. dollars a month. Is it uh, in Ghanaian money? Or are we talking about U.S. money? Oh yeah, U.S. money. Um, in that town, it, it, it varies in that town as well. It all depends on the the apartment complex. It all depends on the home. You could rent a home. Mm -hmm. So if you got a nice mansion home, it's most definitely going to go for. Two thousand dollars USD. I mean, you can convert it in USD or to Ghana CDs. It's up to you. But they 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 like to promote it in dollars. You know, if you look online and type in East Lagan and you look for those high profile places, it's going to tell you in dollars. You know, because they like to collect the US dollar here as well. So how how you how you spell it? L A G O N Lagan. Yeah, L E G O N mm -hmm. East oh, yeah. Lagan. Oh, okay. Cause I, I'm I'm curious about that. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look into that. What you talking about? That that's the first time I heard about it. I, mean, I heard of Accra a lot, but I never heard of that place. So you know that's that's very interesting to me. Yeah. Um. So how? So, yeah, it's right next to Accra. So so how is it with your children? How did your children uh, you know, deal with uh, being outside the states in, in Ghana? Um. It was actually an easy transition. Number one, because. English is the number one language here spoken in Ghana. And number two, there's a, a big expat community here. So when we brought our kids here even the first time, they saw other African-American kids already here, and they was playing with them. And it's just kind of like a big family reunion in a sense. So it was an easy transition. And what we do, we try to keep them together and do things together, even with the Ghanaian kids. So we have schools out here, like, uh, for example, um, there's a school out here ran by an African-American and he has Ghanaian kids and African American kids, and they teach them. They have a school every day. Um, it's a small school, but there's ways that we come together just to, to fellowship, have fun, take trips, and just do things together. So it made it easier for them because of that. So out there, you don't have to worry about the police harassing you every five minutes. <laughs> no, man, it's, it's interesting. Out here, 
you know, especially when you have locks. When the police see you, they be like, Rasta, Rasta. They, they see you, they get all excited, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's real laid back, and I don't have no issues with the cops here. You know, that, that's a good thing. So you said when you originally came and the people heard you speak in American English, um, you say they they looked at you as a movie star. Why why would they look at you that way? Well, they get excited when they see they they. I mean, Ghanaian they love people who come into the country from abroad. They they love it. You know, they they love seeing us come and do business. You know, they they're really big on you know just unity. They know about Bob Marley, about Africa Unite. So when they see it, it's like, come on, let's, let's, let's do business, let's do something. They get excited because they want, they want to unite, they want to do business, they want to make money. And they, they do respect you. When they see you, they do see money. You know, you're from, you from America, they're thinking about money. So they look at you like, come on, let's do business. What, what do you do for a living? <laughs> right. How can we connect? So right. um, they do show a lot of respect to um, those who come from out of the country. Yeah, that's 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 awesome, awesome to hear. And I've heard a lot of uh, people from America actually, you know, move like you said, moved over to Ghana, and and you know, some of them are doing very well. Like some of them, you know, they went to Howard University or you know other different you know places, and they moving you know to Ghana, or some of them are moving to South Africa right. or Kenya, and and they doing very well. Um, what is the main jobs that a lot of these Americans are getting out there? The ones who are going there with the degrees. Well, um, you know, working at the international schools, possibly working at the U.S. Embassy, mainly like government jobs. But, you know, you really don't want to come here depending on a job. Like my mama said of One Africa, she's like, don't come here looking for a job. You know what I mean? Because the job's not plenty because you have educated Ghanaians here looking for the same position. But if you do your research, if you network, you could find something. So most of us, those who come from outside the country, um, are looking to start their own business. They run their own business, or they may have something coming from their home country, you know, an income, maybe a pension, maybe retirement, or maybe whatever business they may be running in America or wherever they're from. They have that coming in while they're trying to do business here because when you do business here, it's very slow. So when you invest in business, you have to invest for the long haul. There's not no quick money here, in my opinion. So, so basically what you're saying is if you establish a, establish a business here, let's say in the States, and then you kind of, uh, as long as that's doing good and you branch out to go abroad, let's say maybe Ghana or uh, whatever country you want to get into, you said that would probably be the best bet? Oh, yeah, most definitely. You need something to carry you on until, you know, the, the business that you start in this country picks up because money will go, and that's the same situation that we, we are in. You know, you hear a lot of stories of people coming here and then they go right back out because you dump your money to make moves and then it doesn't move quick enough. Now you can't even sustain your lifestyle. Now you have to go back, you know. And this is the thing. We face the same situation and we're going through the same situation right now. It's just now recently that we're starting to pick up business because of YouTube has really took us to another level. But uh, we're still going back to the States because we have an even better plan so that when we come back to Ghana, we'd be in a better situation. So um, there's people who've been coming to Ghana for 13 years, back and forth, and building up their businesses here in Ghana and in America. Uh, I know one brother up in the very mountains, he's been coming up here for 13 years. Now he just built a big old, man, I think 16-bedroom home. So when you think about coming here, think about it like you're doing something that's for the long haul, and it's not like you snap your fingers and everything's all good, you know? You want to come here and have a plan. You may go back. You may not. It all depends on your financial situation. You know, my wife and I, like I said, we're just pure entrepreneurs with the savings, and we just made that move. And um, we did pretty good, but um, certain things didn't go well. So now we're planning on transitioning back. Right. Yeah, because, I, you know, that's something that I tell a lot of people right here in America. Let's say if you start a business, but you're working a job. I don't think you should quit that job until that business gets to the point that it's doing times two or maybe times three than what the job exactly. is paying you. Um, so, you know, mm -hmm. I, I said this, you know, uh, I told my wife this, we had a long discussion about it. I want to definitely get property, you know, in the African nation, whether it's, you know, um, you know, I like said, so we go to Ethiopia next month. So I'm going to look at, I'm going to look around there, you know, while I'm there and see what kind of houses and condos that they have, um, yep. you know, in other countries we may travel yep. to. 
But I would like to do like, you know, go so many months, come back, you know, that kind of sort of thing. That's kind of probably how I would do it unless I got to the point that, right. you know, I just, hey, I just wanted to, to stay. But I, I think that it would, it would be good to do so um, in, in that manner just to get that proper transition, <laughs> especially what you're telling me about, yeah. you know, a certain business. Because mm -hmm. you said that one brother had built a home, we said, what, 16-bedroom home? Yeah, really, really nice house. I mean, and he done exactly what you said. And I most definitely encourage that, you know, because here's the thing. There's three people who really, those who really stay here for the long haul are three types of people. Those who are retired, mm -hmm. those who have professions, you know, where they have a job that trans, um, transitions them here, and also those who may have like, a, like, I don't know, millions of dollars, you know, they're doing big business. But for us, you know, people who just, you know, probably have like, I don't know, a little bit of cash in their pocket, you know, and they want to start a business from scratch here, just plan on, you know, maybe going back to and fro. It, like I said, it all depends, you know. We, we've been here for two years, um, and it got to a point that we was kind of just really tight, like a paycheck to paycheck. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like my friend's father said, he's I'd rather you struggle in America rather than struggle in Ghana. So, you know. You know, like what you're saying, I think that's a smart way to do it. Like, you know, buy a condo or some land and gradually build here or have a connection here in Africa. And that's the main message that we like to give to our people is like, you know, consider Africa slowly, you know, because everybody always likes to go to other places. But no, come to Africa, check it out, visit, see if you want to buy land or if you want to do things here, you know, make it a, a traditional thing with you and your family. Just have that connection with Africa because this is where we're from. And we need to start coming here and claiming this land because I tell you this much, all the rest of the foreigners, man, they're doing it. They're, they're putting their hands all over the continent of Africa, and they're, and they're becoming very wealthy off of it. And we should be the ones doing the same. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm a firm believer of that as well. Um, you know, we should be there. We, we should have a stake of claim there, All you know, especially African-Americans for sure. I mean, why not? I mean, mm -hmm. because if we don't have – Africa to go to, it, like I say, if we choose to, whatever. It, and my thing is this: I always tell us here in America, the climate is going on in this country. I'm pretty sure your wife told you, you know, what the climate is now. Yeah. I mean, the climate is is not like it was in, when y'all first left in 2016. It is totally wow. different. I mean, black people can't can't barbecue without white folks calling the police on you. You can't be at the pool without white wow. folks calling the police on you. Black kids selling water, they call the police on you. Like, nah, it's just it's just bad, bro. It's bad. And so, yeah, I hear, man. I hear what's, yeah, I it, hear what's going on, man. It's frustrating, man. It, it is. So that's why I tell all black people we should have a passport at the same time. We have to, you know, be smart on how we make those moves as well. Because, you know, you pick it up moving to a whole different country. You know, Like I said, that's, that's a big yep. thing. Some people can't move to a whole different state sometime and have trouble. You know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, exactly. So, you're right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You know, so you have a person like me. You don't do it right. Let's say I'm here in Houston. The cost of living is great down here. But let's say you move to L.A., cost of living is high. You know, things are different. I mean, so it's like I say, it's literally the same thing. I mean, so because, you know, you have some mm -hmm. some African-Americans, some that's been so programmed, you know, by, by the colonizer in this country that, you know, oh, you right. see, you see, you know, we you can't live over there. Like, no, you just got to do like the other brother did, go back and forth. Build your spot, mm -hmm. you know, pay it off or whatever how you want to do it. Then you want to live there, live there. That's your business. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think everything is definitely going to work out. Like I said, y'all know how to do it now. And that's the thing about life, you know. You live and learn. Yeah. You, you, you plan better. And, and then, then you go forward. Yeah, it's true. It's exactly true. You know, we made some mistakes, but I believe that we're just learning. There, I think that there is no mistakes. You're just learning. You're growing. And, um, you know, people will be like, oh, don't go back to America. Stay here. And some people say, yeah, please, go back to America. This is the thing. We're going to do what's, what's best for us, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, and right now it is to go back to the States for the time being. You know, our kids is homeschooled. You know, we homeschool them here. My three big girls and my two little ones, they go to the public school here and um, where we live. So everybody is just doing their thing, you know. And um, so when we transition back to the states, we know how to maneuver. We know what we get ourselves into, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's like I say, it's very, very interesting. That's for, that's for sure. Um, so right. let me ask you a question: Like when you go, guys, go shopping. Uh, for instance, uh, let's say you go to grocery stores or stuff like that. 
Um, what's the difference with the, with the food in Ghana versus America? Oh, excellent question. Actually, I recently did a video call, Cost of Living in Ghana. So you can check that out. Just type native born and Google. Nate, uh, born is E F N B O R N E, native born. Mm -hmm. And I did a video called The Cost of Living in Ghana. And it's the same exact thing as the States. You know, you got your know, drinks, your produce, you got your poultry, you have everything there. So here, you get everything that you get in America. But the only issue here is sometimes it's not as convenient. So if I want to get something, I may have to go a little bit of a distance to go get a particular thing. Uh, like, for an example, um, uh, I can't think of one right now, but, um, you know, it's certain things that, that you want. Maybe if I want to get some, some organic kale, for example. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't, they, nobody, nobody's going to sell organic kale unless you go all the way to the Max Mart. Or there's a brother here named David. He sells organic kale, um, but he's kind of far out. So you got to call him up, make an order, and he'll have a guy with a motorbike come and deliver it to you. So it's not like, okay, let me go out to stop and shop or whatever grocery store that's down the street and grab me some organic kale. So you have to kind of make some moves and to get that thing. But other than that, everything is pretty much here that's in the U.S. Now let me ask you a question. Let's see if it's similar to the U.S. The people in East Lagoon, they have access to everything. They ain't got to leave much, do they? Yeah, they pretty much got everything, man. I, I be seeing cars on that road like, like what's the world? Like, you, you, they have money here. You know, I'm mm -hmm. like, man, where they get this money from? <laughs> but, um, yeah, everything is there. Um, got restaurants, malls, you know, everything. Okay. That's pretty, that's pretty uh, like they said, I, we would definitely want to let people know that. Because, you know, unfortunately, you know, you have people that's extremely ignorant, you know, in the States. And not because it's their fault, because the American indoctrination system told them that every African nation has mud huts. And, um, you know, and it's just the most horrible it's place true. to be to keep us away from there. Um, but like you said, every other group, like the Chinese, which I can't really stand hearing about the Chinese right now, what they're doing in Kenya. Uh, and and uh, everywhere else oh, that man. they go. They, oh, oh they, they, they doing things in Ghana, too? Oh, yeah, man. Yep, they buy it in bulk, too. I'm talking about humongous plots of land, like acres and acres of land. And they're, they're invested. They're building buildings and banks and everything. So, you now, know. Now, the Chinese, you know, are they being I, I racist? Um, no, no. I'm having no issues with them. They just here to do business. Uh, not I don't yet. Them bother no one. <laughs> I know not yet. They just, you should hear what's going so. on in Kenya, brother. Like, they, they out there. They, got, they, they uh, built a train uh, station out there and they don't want the black workers eating in the lunchroom with them. Uh, they, they, uh, wow. uh, uh, yeah, calling them names. They're doing, they beating on them. They do all kind of stuff out there. And I'm like, how y'all let them come in your country? I don't understand these African leaders, man. I don't like, how is you let these Chinese I heard about that. do what? I, yeah, I heard about that. Even in Ghana, somebody told me about that. One of, my, one of the brothers I was speaking to, he was like, yeah, like some like these Arabs and Chinese people, they be, Beating on some of the Ghanaian workers and stuff. I'm like, what? Are you serious? Like, I never, I never seen it though. I never seen it, but I hear the same thing. This, this is the issue. Is because one thing I don't like about what's going on here in Africa is that they're just giving up the land to anyone. You know, you can't go to China and just buy up land. Like, you can't do that. But here in in Africa, we're doing that. We're just selling it. Everything's for a price. And that's why I dislike about it. It's, that's why I am an advocate with having some sort of connection here in Africa. Mm -hmm. Because I'm telling you, all. <laughs> I mean, I think like Malcolm X said, he's like, we need, uh, we need allies. You know, we need another place to go to if we have to, you know. And not only that, it's just because this is a beautiful place, you know. This is where we're from, and, and it does something to your soul, man, you know, when you're here. And even though we struggled here a little bit, it's like it was a good struggle. It's like kind of having a baby. You go through pain, but when you make it, it feels good. You're glad that you went through it. So that's why we encourage our people, man. Just just take a trip here and get give a connection. Give yourself a connection to Africa and let those foreigners see that there there's a, a growing tourism uh, movement when African Americans come to Africa, and that that makes a lot. That, that is a big deal when people start seeing that African Americans are interested in coming back to Africa. So just by visiting Africa, you know, we could do a lot of different big things. Right. So you mentioned land. How much? How much is land going per acre out there? 
Um, depends on location. Um, the further you are away from the city, the more cheaper. So for an example, you might get a plot of land for 5,000 CDs. Um, uh, I'm trying to convert that. Or you could get land. I mean, land can be expensive, especially around East Lake Island. That's, that's the U.S. prices. You're probably buying a plot of land. It's kind of like a quarter of an acre. It could easily go for twenty, thirty thousand if you're in a prime, prime prop area. But if you're out here, um, let's say for example, Dodoa, you could easily spend like maybe uh, about a little under a thousand dollars for a plot. So it all it all depends. I'm actually gonna make a, a a YouTube video about land. I have one of my Ghanaian friends. They know more than me when it comes to land, and um, they're gonna show us around and talk about prices and areas. Okay, so so brother, tell people how to get to your YouTube channel so they can check it out. Okay, you go to youtube.com forward slash native born, and that's N A T I V E B O R N E, E as in Edward. So that's native born, and we're known as the native born family. All right, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you check out John and his wife. You know, it's featured on the channel as well, and they, they give you a lot of tips about. Ghana and, and like I said, I saw some of their videos, you know, before, and uh, there's a lot of good tips. For, you know, because some people, you know, like I said, they want to go and visit. Some people want to move, and they tell you the pros and cons. I did see that video, so that was good that they did that you know, because you know we don't want to put out just a pipe dream, and then you, you find out, oh, wait a minute, you know, we, we have to be realistic. Exactly. Right? And they made a video that was very realistic, yeah. and, and I appreciate that kind of video. So, John, you know, so you take care of yourself out there. Like I said, I'm going to do some more research, like I say, into Ghana myself um, on a few things I definitely would like to visit. Oh, yeah, man. Come on down. Come check it out. You know, we're here. All right, brother. Take care of yourself.